Oratory Fellows Program, the Civil War Washington Program, they're trying to make history really come alive. Getting away from just Okay, let's open up and read about the Civil War. Well, no, let's see what the Civil War looked like. Let's listen to what it sounded like. Let's feel it. It's one thing to understand or to try to understand what Mr. Lincoln meant to our country. It's another thing to walk in his footsteps. I imagine the weight of the, the war on Lincoln's shoulders, and so I'm, I walk up the stairs and I just try to imagine how he's pulling himself up. And you get an idea about what he went through, what he struggled through. Civil War Washington is a network with historical sites that are doing a lot of innovative work. It's with Ford's Theater, uh, Frederick Douglass's house, Tudor Place, Abraham Lincoln's cottage. Each one brought something a little bit different to the table. It gave me a different perspective in a great way and great teaching strategies on how to present historical documents as documents of persuasion. The Oratory Fellows Program is a really nice companion piece for teachers who've gone through the Civil War Washington Teacher Fellows Program and want to stay more deeply connected. One of the greatest things is to be able to network with teachers across the country. Teaching is a very solitary act. So this idea that, you know, Georgette or that Mike, we can have a conversation and they can look at something. In a common dialogue, in a, a shared vision and a shared goal. I like that, that sort of partnership, it's long term, it's, it's highly connected. The idea of putting a teaching artist in a classroom via video conference is not something that is usual. For me as a teaching artist, I see my role in this process as facilitating the capacity of teachers. And just keep, maintain your connection with us because we care. What you have to say makes us care. Helping teachers understand that everything that they need is in them. They just have to have the confidence to bring it out. And I found myself uh, using a lot of the vocabulary that she used with my kids and creating like a common dialogue, which is also what like the PED TV does. That's pace emphasis, diction, tone, and volume. And the reason why it's called PET TV is just because it's an easy acronym to remember. You can also um, think about the tone throughout. So this is his first inaugural address, the beginning of his presidency. So thinking about what you as FDR are trying to tell the audience. And so we teach the students this language so that they can use it not only in our work, but really in life. We're not just doing theater, we're really integrating theater and leadership and history and English language arts. I spend more time actually focusing on the primary and secondary documents than I did. I have so many students who come in and say, oh, I've memorized the Gettysburg Address, but they don't really understand what it means. What were the words, what were the author's intent, what was um, the historic background? to which these words were written. Such an important element of Abraham Lincoln's leadership because when people heard them, they thought differently of him. Hearing that personal story brings something to the content that you're not gonna read in the pages of your textbook. They are doing better than they have previous years when we're dealing with historical documents. They are better able to figure out vocabulary, they are better able to understand purpose. There's been a huge improvement in our test scores. Like most districts, we periodically assess student skills throughout the year. What we found with the classes in the oratory partnership was that each time we were assessing them, they were typically at or even slightly above the expected target. The classes that weren't participating, they still had quite a bit of room for improvement. One of the things that the Oratory Fellows Program allows us to do is put our students' work on display. And to me, that's the most effective way to get support for something that you're doing. It's just incredible, the, the difference in their confidence level. It's not only um, confidence in being in front of the room, I think it's confidence in knowing that what they're saying matters. This is our hope. This is the faith that I go back to the South with. With this faith, we will be able to hew out of the mountain of despair a stone of hope. It really made me self-reflect 
and learned that I wasn't doing what I was asking my students to do. You know, I was asking them to stand up and be brave, and it's changed how I've, how I've acted this last year in my own teaching. Um, taking chances and standing up and sharing my thoughts. And I think that that's a really important outcome and a really important aspect of the program because they need to be confident public speakers in order to help their students become confident public speakers. We're such an unusual institution because we sit at the nexus of the performing arts and um, American history and leadership. So for us, it's really our responsibility to help people make those connections and to provide teachers and students with the support that they need to, to be like Lincoln, to, to be a person of integrity and to be a person of voice. That's why Ford Theater is a great place to do this. It's a historic site. There's a lot of history. We can bring students here and not just take advantage of Ford's, but take advantage of all of the other history in Washington, D.C. for them to learn from, but always tying it back to, to Ford's Theater and to Lincoln. You know, the street here where Ford's Theater is, they have under the street sign where Lincoln's legacy lives. And I think both programs do that. They are making sure that history lives on by changing the way that we teach history.